Welcome to the BBTV Network, coming to you from the UK studios of BizVision. I'm your host, Malcolm Gallagher. Now, this is episode two in the BBTV trilogy with the founder of Rob's School of Music, Rob Spampinato. Hello again, Rob. Hello, Malcolm. Can't wait to keep chatting. It's England calling New York. (laughs) Yeah, meant to be. Yeah, I mean, I suppose in the old days, you know, every musician, the UK musician, wanted to crack the big, uh, the the big American market, but very few did. Why was that? Do you think? You know, it was such a different world back then. I'm so fascinated with music history. Music has literally been the driving force in my life. So, like, I look mm-hmm. at things like how, like, Led Zeppelin, one of my all-time favorite bands, like, they the critics slam them in America. I don't know why. I mean, they were dead wrong, you know? So I don't know, but almost that's better because like now in hindsight, that's cool. You know, that's Mm anti-establishment. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Rob, I'm no musician myself, but I've worked in management with some of the best in the world from Johnny Cash, the animals, Roy Orbison, Gene Pitney, all of them seem dead to me, but never mind. And many more watching them work. They made it seem effortless, but I know it's not. It's a constant crafting of ability. Can online lessons get you to anywhere near that level of proficiency, perhaps even to making some money from, say, gigs or adverts? Absolutely. And that's something we focus on in our whole program. We always get, as I said previously, we get to the why. So if someone's goal Mm -hmm. is just to play in their bedroom or around the Christmas tree, totally cool. If their goal is to take it to perform in a band and eventually make some money, we definitely can guide them through that process. And the online experience is no different than an in-person. You're getting the same education. We provide all of our students, not only with the live interactive video, but supplemental videos, PDFs, access to our portal where they can access the other students so they can form a community there and exchange contacts and leads. Mm -hmm. So you can go all the way. Absolutely. Excellent. Excellent. Now, obviously, um, not everybody wants to do that. Can can you spot somebody, though, given all your years of experience, can you spot somebody that's got really got that potential? Yes. And when that happens, I lose it. And it's sometimes even, you know, when I meet someone for the first time, we're strangers, obviously. And yeah. when they have that fire, I instantly become my personality goes from a 13 that it starts out to like a 35. I just get very over the top. And sometimes it's off putting to people. And I let them know, like, you don't understand, like, it's so exciting and refreshing to see someone who naturally has this thing hidden inside of themselves and then we cultivate it and i think that's really a cool thing about what we do here is it because we're not following a strict specific curriculum it allows us to take we have one student and she hates using a pick and that's like a no-no because you have more articulation with the pick but she does this cool thing where it's like hybrid finger picking but it's strumming it's very unique to just her and i think she's going to take it all the way wow wow and um, you, you, of course, can help people right the way through that process. It's not just to teach them how to play an instrument, is it? No, not at all. So we work with our students um, on songwriting. If they want to take it to building their own social media, we can focus on that. We can focus on branding. We're sort of a one-stop shop in branding of future artists. I hate to use the word artist development because that's not that like in music, that's like such a taboo thing to say. But Mm -hmm, if a student mm -hmm. wants to go a particular direction, we definitely have the manpower because all of the teachers, we're all college educated musicians. We are all still currently recording and touring and making music outside of our teaching job. So it's real world practitioners paying it forward to up and comers. Yeah, I I like that because, um, you know, in the old days, you were you were caught by the record companies and they had you by the whatever you want to call it, you know. Um, But now there's so many opportunities, aren't there? Yes. And you can do it all on your own with social media. Mm. You know, even back when I was coming up, when I was in high school, I graduated high school in 2001. And in 2001, 2099, when I was starting my bands, to have a CD out cost you $2,000. To have a website cost you $2,000. To go book shows costs you a couple hundred bucks because you have to sell tickets to be able to play. Now you can sit in your house, throw on Twitch, throw on Zoom, invite your friends on YouTube, play some music, throw out a digital tip jar, put your website on social media, SoundCloud, you can get it on Spotify. It's all you can become an independent musician and actually thrive in such an easier world than when I started, you know, 25 years ago, 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the the sharks are maybe not around as much as they used to be. Is that correct? Uh, You know, they're still there. They're there, but they've learned their place because there's so many artists who are able to do it without any help from anyone else. And that just takes, you know, hustle. It's life. I mean, the world is out there more so than ever. 
with a good teacher and a good set of talent and a good song, there's nothing stopping you from taking it out to the world. Excellent. I like that. And I just like also this this constant hand-holding that you've got with, with people, that they're becoming part of your community rather than a student, aren't they? 100%. We look at it as family. You know, I've come from a strong uh, Italian heritage and it's all about yeah. family. You know, like we, we have a, you know, we'll do concerts within our students and we all go out to a giant dinner afterwards. Like, you know, the people that are here yeah. in, in New York, but even virtually we've done virtual hangouts. We did a two week long um, digital camp last summer or summer 2020. I'm sorry. And we had people, we had songwriters from Sweden jumping in and Iceland and just all these different places. And we were all just here on zoom hanging out like we're in person. So we were a family, a big community. Yeah. Yeah. And I really like that about what about Rob School of Music, that community, because, you know, musicians can be lonely. There's no doubt about it as they as they're sitting in their bedroom, play, strumming away or whatever they're trying to do. And they really need to be able to interact with other musicians, don't they? To be able to make the melody, if that's the expression. Yep, totally. And then another really cool thing about this virtual world, and this is newer technology, we haven't quite come to a place where we could jam simultaneously virtually. But if you record a piece of music to a metronome and then send me that file and I take out the metronome, I can play along to it. And all of a sudden we're creating music. And we've had that happen with our students from around the world where we've written songs and putting pieces together, putting put pieces together, <laughs> musician language. Um, yeah. With people, you know, all around. And it's just, we're collaborating. We're forming bands with people that have never met in real life. Yeah. I, I am so fascinated about how forward thinking you are in, in this technical technical world. So um, I'm going to squeeze an extra little question in here. And we're talking about the future, Rob. Are we going to be able to, to play in the metaverse? Are we going oh, to learn? Uh, One million percent. It, it's yeah. going there and love it or hate it. And I'm still on the fence for it. I'm researching it because it's going to be a thing and I think it's going to change everything. Yeah, and, uh, you can you'll have a virtual band, won't you? Um, mm -hmm. And be part of that virtual band. I think that's going to be the exciting bit for again for the lonely musician. Yep. Yep. You'll be hanging out at the virtual club and you'll be playing the same virtual songs that, you know, <laughs> I had to cut my teeth on. And it's just going to be it's the same cycle that repeats itself. So, yeah, yeah that's yeah. the future. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, rather than going out to the arenas and I've managed those, you'll be, you'll be sitting in your own arena at home. Fascinating. Now, thanks, Rob. Now, let's give viewers and listeners details of your URL, uh, where they can come and find out all about you and the community and the lessons and so on. Uh, the, the URL you can see on the screen behind me, viewers, but let me spell it out for listeners. And it's all the W's, all the W's, Rob's, R-O-B-S, schoolofmusic.com. So don't forget, there's two S's in the middle there, robschoolofmusic.com. Go there, find out not just more details about Rob and his huge mix of music learning, but also details of these exciting online lessons. Get you really started. It really is an exciting offering that Rob, a true visionary entrepreneur, has developed for anyone, anywhere in the world using technology. And that's what I want to explore with him in episode three his vision for the future. Are you up for that, Rob? Can't wait. Can't wait. I got a lot to say. Thanks so much for having me, Malcolm. I look forward to it.